focused mind of Junior Hanley has his sight locked on the final leg of the Budweiser Triple Crown. The first jewel of the Triple Crown was captured May 17th at Delaware Speedway Park. The chase was on as Junior Hanley could taste a second consecutive crown as he did in 91. The second hurdle was crossed at Mostport International on July 12th as Hanley led the pack like a man possessed and another jewel to the crown. But wait, of late, Hanley's had his problems. Fuel difficulties late in the race caused a poor finish at San Air Speedway, Quebec. August 23rd at Mosport saw Junior Hanley run out of car. A hard push caused tires and brakes to give way. A second place would have to do. This year, the ACT competitors have been dogged. Drivers like Robbie Crouch and Randy McDonald have been on Hanley's tail and occasionally in front all year long. Let's add one more weight to Hanley's load. NASCAR Winston Cup star, Ken Schrader. I've been up here several times. Uh, we came up, it's one of the deals. You walk in Sunday morning, you hop in the car you're not used to. Uh, I really like the track. I enjoy the track. That's why this weekend we elected to, to bring a car that I was used to, with people that I was used to working with, uh, something that we could really come up here and race. Uh, Junior's got a lot at stake, and we'd sure like to race him. There's going to be a lot of guys that want to keep him from winning. Not keep him from winning, but just so they can be standing in the front straightaway at the end of the race, and we're going to be one of them. Can Junior Hanley find the power to leave the competition behind and find that final jewel to complete the crown? Today, from the 5-inch mile oval, Cayuga Speedway, Nell's Corners, Ontario, the chase is on. 200 laps. It's the Budweiser Triple Crown on our Summer of Thunder Tour, 92. Hi again, everybody. I'm Eric Thomas, along with Dave Moody and John Massengord, and welcome to the Budweiser Triple Crown 200 here at Cayuga. Dave, we could be in for an historic afternoon here on the American Canadian Tour. Junior Hanley shooting for his second consecutive GM title and his second straight sweep of the Budweiser Triple Crown. If he pulls this off, one bonanza of a payday. $100,000 if he can win the race and thereby the GM Series. A lot of pressure today for the man from Campbellville, Ontario. But he's a former ACT champion, a former GM Series champion, and a former Bud Triple Crown champion. He's been there before. Special guest Winston Cup driver Ken Schrader is here in a very quick automobile on a track he knows very well. Add that to the usual strong squadron of ACT regulars. This is not going to be easy for Junior, is it? It is anything but a cakewalk here this afternoon. Junior qualified only fourth fastest. Kenny Schrader, who came in late after a Winston Cup show last night, has got a very strong mount underneath him. Make no mistake, he's the hired gun here today. He's here for one reason, to keep Junior Hanley away from Budweiser's 50 grand. For more, let's go down to trackside in John Massingberg. Well, gentlemen, it's a story of first today for Danny Beatty, the first on the pole this year on the inside front row. Outside front row, the first time that Steve Knowlton's been on the front row in Canada. For uh, Kim Wallace, the rookie of the year, he's leading the points. And the biggest first of the day is going to be this one. Potentially the biggest payday in Canadian motorsport history as Junior Hanley goes for $100,000 plus. Dollars. The question mark is going to be, though, a couple of guys back in the pack. You've got the 48 of Robbie Crouch. He's got a V6 today. Tire wear and fuel is going to be very important. He may be able to go the distance without a pit stop. And then we've always got the sneaker in the back, the one guy that loves to race everywhere, Ken Schrader in the number 50 Budweiser Oldsmobile. Gentlemen, that's the story. When we return on Raceline, we'll be ready to go green. The GM National Stock Car Series is brought to you by GM Park, the expert choice. Kodak Gold Plus Films. You can't keep the moment without Kodak. Castrol XLR, the oil engineered for today's car. Rebel, the world's model maker. And by Budweiser Racing. It's a Bud Race. It is. The Bud Triple Crown 200 lines up just like this. Dan Beatty has found something. Very quick, he won the heat, he won the semi, he's on the front row in the Buick. Outside, the independent campaigner from Ipswich, Massachusetts, Steve Knowlton in a Chevrolet Luminar. Go back to June, Kim Wallace finished fourth in that event. He is capable of another top five here today. And outside Wallace to go in the number four position, the man everybody's watching, Junior Hanley in the Molson X, 72. Claude Leclerc from Rapontigny, Quebec, near Montreal. Great qualifying for Claude. Here he is inside row three in the Lumina. And outside the third row, Randy McDonald of Oshawa, Ontario. Still an outside shot to win the GM Series. 
a look at the crowd here. The weather, it's cleared up, but it is very, very windy out here today. Let's have a look at the balance of the field here. Bill Zardo Sr. was fifth in this event back in June. There's the two V6-powered cars, Crouch and Layton, beside each other in row five. Rolly McDonald, the Bigfoot from Nova Scotia, starts on the outside of row number seven. Inside eight, a man to keep an eye on. Roger LaPearl lights the big track. Row 10, Beaver Dragon, second to Randy McDonald back here in June. Make our way down. There's John Greedy recovering from that terrible wreck we had our last race line event at Mosport. Down to row 16 and down to 17 is where you find Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri. Schrader qualified better than the outside of row 17, but took some extra time to make some fine-tuning adjustments on that automobile. He'd rather start last with a good race car. Hanley can wrap this whole thing up with a win here today. That's it. They're a 34-point lead on Randy McDonald. So, the green flag is ready. Dan Beatty, Steve Knowlton lead him around. Turn number four, down to the strike. The green flag comes out and we're underway with the Bud Triple Crown 200 at the Speedway. And on the inside, it is Dan Beatty in the Villa Phillips 66 Buick. Dominated his qualifying heat race, dominated the semi-feature, and the first half lap belongs to the 53. Beatty away with the lead. Knowlton in second, side by side for third. Kim Wallace and Junior Hanley on the outside. Did Dan Beatty ever get a great start here? Knowlton following in second place. And look who's on the move already in the crowd up and watching. Junior Hanley wasting no time. Forget 200 laps, Dave. He wants to get to the front and do it right now. Well, make no mistake about it. Junior Hanley is the favorite son here at Cayuga. Hasn't won here in a good long time, but a vast majority of the people in this grandstand are here for one reason, to see Junior Hanley carry away that Budweiser money. As you and I talked about off the top of the show, Dave, a potential payday of $111,000 in change. The Triple Crown's on the line. The GM Championship is on the line. The purse, lap money. That's why Junior's charging to the front and doing it right now. Hanley is charging. He always charges, but today even a little bit harder because if Hanley can get out of traffic, get away from the other automobiles, he's got an awful lot on the line. He wants to put it all on his shoulders and not have anybody else have a say in the final outcome. Here's the look out of the Kim Wallace automobile as he drafts Stevie Knowlton down the back straightaway. He's going to go to the outside in turn number three. This is the battle for the number three position. Riding on board with Kim Wallace out of Peterborough in the Flexmore Trucking Chevrolet. That's Junior Hanley up there as they head down past the main grandstand into turn number one here. And Kim Wallace getting a good bite on the outside as he overhauls the 88 of Steve Knowlton. Right behind them, Randy McDonald in the 0-1. All eyes here in the early going have been on Junior Hanley. But don't count out the Oshawa goal. Golden boy Randy McDonald comes in here today as we mentioned just 34 points behind Hanley he needs a good run and he also needs for Junior to have some problems but right now McDonald is on the outside and gaining ground Randy McDonald won his first event of the year right here at Cayuga back in June going the entire distance with no stops for fuel and tires he's going for his fourth win so things really started to turn around once he was here at Cayuga here's the lead pair 53 Dan Beatty he's led all the way off the inside pole but there's Junior Hanley Eric a a little bit of smoke coming off the right rear tire. Yep. It appears that there may just be a body panel rubbing there as he took the number two position away from Steve Knowlton. They bumped just a bit in the corners. It has not slowed JR down. He is now on the back bumper, pressuring Dan Beatty hard for the lead. This is the view that strikes fear in the hearts of men on this tour. A view of Junior Hanley coming right under your chin, charging for the front. Now he's going to set sights on Beatty. Moves down to the inside. Here they come side by side in turn number four. Down the Across the strike, beating and handling what a job into turn one. Junior Hanley by about a foot had the lead at the line, and he is underneath. It took him all of 16 laps to come from fourth to first, and now let's see what Hanley can do. Typically, he's the man to try and put everybody away, take the lead by a half a lap if he can, but he's got some folks coming hard behind him. 53 Beatty hanging in there, and the man on the move is Randy McDonald. Randy McDonald is on the move. We watched him work with Tire Stagger here on Saturday. They had a vibration in the driveline, Dave. They put universal joints front and rear in this car. It's working perfectly right now. Junior's up front, Beatty in the middle, but the man on the move, you're right, is the 01 of Oshawa's Randy McDonald. We mentioned earlier how Junior Handley would like to get out in front and have himself a one-man race today. It does not look like Randy McDonald in the GM Parts Pro Shop machine is going to play along with that plan. He now is putting the pressure on Beatty. And Beatty, the pole sitter, now in a battle for the number two position. Doesn't surprise me at all that Randy is on the move and moving well here. Whenever he has a chance, he gets the keys from Mr. Slack, comes out here when no one else is around, and he tests on this track. He knows the setup. He knows how to get around here quickly, and the luminous coming right up in your face here. 
Dan Beatty holding on to the inside line. And perhaps surprisingly, Eric, Hanley has not been able to pull away. He came from the number four position like a hot knife through butter. Took the lead, but now Dan Beatty and Randy McDonald able to draft with him down the front shoot. They are sticking with him, and you're right, Dave. There's still that smoke from the right rear of the Hanley 72, whether that is a body panel rubbing, or at least he may just be drifting that hard, especially in turn number four. And that's the way you got to get around this place. you got to run your car on the loose side to get that car to almost sideways drift in turn number four. Dan Beatty, you can see a little smoke coming off the back end of that automobile as well. We've got a caution flag on the field. Drivers backing off on the front chute, and oh. that's John Grady for the second race in a row. There's fire under the zero car. The engine in the zero has whooped its cookies, and what a tough break out here for John Grady. His day is done. The crash, everyone's talking about that at most port, but now his day is finished with the engine going away in the zero. One week ago, he was upside down and on fire. Today, though, same end result. Impressive charge here by Oshawa's Randy McDonald. He's got a radio. Randy, Eric Thomas, Raceline, do you read? Yeah, Eric. Randy, Junior out front like we sort of predicted right off the front, but you've been able to gain some ground on him. How's the car uh, handling? I understand you've got a bit of a push going in here. Yeah, just through the middle and the exit, it's pushing a bit, and I'm hitting that rubber that you see on the racetrack. Can't get a good exit. Question we've asked so many times, uh, Junior catchable? Well, I think he just faded there at the end, so I don't know. He's probably going to have to pit here before he wants to. Well, as always, tires a prime concern here at Cayuga. For more on the tire situation, let's go downstairs to John Massingbird with this week's Castrol Tech File. Hi, welcome to the Castrol Tech File. You know they say if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door to buy it. Well, we've got one in this little instrument. When teams are setting up for tire stagger, and particularly on scuffed-in tires, they'll measure around with a tape measure. Well, with all of these pebbles in the tire, that can give you a little bit of a variance in the uh, stagger because you've got to measure over top of all this. So what they've devised and come up with is this thing that basically is a matter of pulling it across and setting it on the tire, and it'll give you an exact circumference measurement without having to go all the way around and getting possibly an inaccurate measurement. Nothing like a high technology here in ACT racing. Measuring the tire is also important, but it's getting them on quickly that's the key to winning here at Cayuga, Dave. Getting them on quickly and then making them last once they are on. And right now, Hanley, Dan Beatty, Randy McDonald, the front three as we set for the restart. Green flag is out and Hanley pulling away into turn number one and McDonald down low going for second. Oh, Randy McDonald saw the hole and said, if you can get there, I can get there too. Beatty starting to fade back and now... The two warriors, like we've seen so many times on Raceline, Junior Hanley and Randy McDonald challenging, and they tap each other here in four. Junior Hanley drifting very wide through the corners. Randy McDonald stuck his nose into the action down low. Hanley saw his error and shut the door. Very fortunate for both Hanley and McDonald that they were able to hang on to it. That was close by the wall just a couple of seconds ago. That was Dave Ison almost came up and put the concrete there. So up front, these are the guys, everybody else trying to chase the 72 of Junior Hanley with that huge payday on the line. And Randy McDonald, again, the challenge, just hitting his nose on the inside, letting Junior know he's there, Dave. And this is exactly what we talked about Junior not wanting to do early on in this race. If he can get out front and run by himself, so much the better. He does not want to be feeling the heat from anybody, but most particularly Randy McDonald, the number two man in the GM point stand. Check in with our Winston Cup star, a little loose there, Ken Schrader in the Budweiser Oldsmobile, behind the seven of Andre Baudouin, the 15 of Derek Lynch, and Brad Layton here in the 1X. He's running that middle groove, giving everybody a lot of room here, Dave. Kenny Schrader has not got a perfect race car under him at this juncture of the event. You saw him go very, very high into turn one, allowed the 1X of Brad Layton to get underneath him. But Kenny Schrader, he's used to running long racers, 500 miles and more on the Winston Cup Series. He's going to work with this car, and I guarantee by the end of the show, it'll be a whole lot closer to the money than it is right now. Scott Hansen prepared Oldsmobile. You're right. Maybe horsepower is down a bit, but Randy McDonald and Brad Layton and I were looking this sled over. No expense is spared. It's a gorgeous car. He is, as you say, a little slower. He's riding that nice middle groove, and importantly, too, giving the regular ACT runners lots of room to maneuver. Kenny Schrader, one of the more accessible drivers drivers on the Winston Cup Series in terms of going out and running some short track shows on his day off. You know, he said he would rather than get $5,000 to come into your local Speedway and sign autographs. He said, give me two grand and find me a good car to race because that's where Kenny Schrader has his fun. 
Oh, the bullets are flying in this little pistol shoot up front. Randy McDonald really putting the heat on Junior Hanley up front. And it appears that Randy McDonald has the quicker race car of the two. You can see Hanley drifting again a little bit high. McDonald sticks the nose underneath. Junior has got more horsepower, it appears. That's true. McDonald handling a whole lot better in the corners. And he has found something in the handling, and that is not easy to do here. That's going to be a story. Look at Kevin LePage getting wheels down off the real estate, trying to get his nose in here in front of the 48 of Robbie Crouch. Kevin LePage, that's his backup car. Is he ever sore and stiff from that wreck at most board? He can barely turn his head. He's hurting out here. LePage's brand new automobile reduced to just so much aluminum foil a week ago at most board. He is not 100% as a driver, but Kevin LePage at 80 is still better than a lot of guys at 100. He's in a great battle right now with the 53 of Dan Beatty, the 48 of Robbie Crouch, then Bill Zardo right behind. 48 of Robbie Crouch and a familiar Crouch Blue. Don't forget, he's running the V6. He gets the weight break with that, as is the 1X of Brad Layton. He got his first win on Raceline at Postport. He's hoping that same V6 strategy will hold true for this race here at Cayuga. If he can go the distance, he is definitely going to be a player in this thing. And after what we saw a week ago, there's no doubt that somebody's going to try and roll the dice and go all the way. But right now, the main players, the main rollers, if you will, continue mm -hmm. to be Hanley and McDonald. And look at Randy McDonald put the pressure on the 72. Up and behind on the bumper, swinging down low, just knocking on the door, letting Junior say, I'm here. Now they're going to get close, tapping again. These guys are going at it, not holding anything back. Junior Hanley cannot be liking this because every tire mark that Randy McDonald puts on that left rear quarter panel is a potential problem. Here's McDonald again, and this time he may have... Oh, oh sideways out of the turn two and down the back two. McDonald very nearly had the spot that time around. Just got his toes into it a little too deep, Dave, and broke the back end of the Lumina loose, and that gives Junior a little more working room here, pulling away maybe another car length. We hear squealing tires, and Howie Scannell's in trouble up against the wall. The 76 backing it into the outside retaining wall. Some minor cosmetic damage as he gets his foot right back into it and continues on. But for the first time today, they've called off the dogs. Randy McDonald will have to back up. More from Raceline from Cayuga and the Bud Triple Crown is coming up. Welcome back to Raceline, Cayuga Speedway. The Bud Triple Crown 200, Eric Thomas, Dave Moody, John Massey heard the leader on Pit Row Dave. Junior Hanley, as we mentioned, not entirely happy with his race car at this early stage, and he's going to bring it in for right side tires at the very least. Derek Lynch also in, the black and green 46 of Bill Zardo. But here's where the action is. Junior Hanley gives up the lead to Randy McDonald to come in for tire. Big drink of fuel down there. Right side rubber going on. John Massey is standing by down below. John. A standard pit stop for Junior Hanley. Right side tires fill the tank up, and Junior now will be ready to go the distance to the end. Stalls it. He's down and out. And it's interesting, Eric, if you look at the right rear quarter panel, you see a little bit of a rubber mark. On the left rear, you see a real big rubber mark where Randy McDonald has been putting on the pressure. Ken Schrader in the pits, and I want to tell you something. Good car and a good support staff as well. Holly Leto and company. Holly Leto, one of the best short track crew guys in the business, giving service here to Ken Schrader up on the jacks. Now he buries the throttle in a way he moves here. A little slow there on the end, but I think he's okay. Eric, I think we've got to look at what caused this yellow flag period. This is the 27 of Kim Wallace inside Howie Scannell. Howie slams the door, and it's goodbye, 76, into the outside wall. Very fortunate not to be collected. LePage, McDonald, Knowlton, Crouch, and LaPearl, your top five at the moment on the GM Parts Budweiser Bud Triple Crown leaderboard. Performance Racing News Trivia. Going to test your ACT knowledge here once again on Raceline. Let's see what we got here. From the bowels of the media guide, which of the following three drivers have claimed ACT NASCAR North wins at Cayuga? Fadden, Earnhardt, or Randy LaJoy? What you think about it? Come back in a few minutes and get your answer. Of course, the American Canadian Tour, back in the olden days, known as NASCAR North. It's a forerunner, if you will, but right now, we've got ourselves a restart right here and now. Randy McDonald, Kevin LePage, Chevrolet, and Ford down to the line looking for a green. Am I impressed by the charge here by Kevin LePage? In the Thunderbird and Randy McDonald are like stuck together as they go around turns one and two and down the backstretch. LePage trying to hang tough on the outside, but that's a difficult way to go. McDonald 
down low with the advantageous line, but he cannot shake Kevin LePage. The 21 up on the outside, pulling even, sticks oh. a nose in front of Randy McDonald as they swap some fiberglass. They did. They touched up there on the straightaway, and you talk about superior horsepower, at least at this juncture. LePage has got to have a lot of horses to be able to pull away on McDonald, especially on the outside of the turns, Dave. This is tremendous racing. McDonald down on the inside, just hanging on now. LePage gets <laughs> the bite out of turn four, banging again at the start finish oh. line, and Kevin LePage has taken the lead on the outside. Stiff neck, sore back, forget it. This guy's out here banging around, and he's got the lead in Kevin LePage out of Shelburne, Vermont, at the Donut Plamont Allen Lumber Thunderbird with his win at St. Felicien, hoping for two here. Steve Knowlton in the 88 has held off the charge by Robbie Crouch, who now runs in the number four position. But here's the battle. Up from the back of the pack, Hanley and Schrader, the would-be champion and the hired gun running nose to tail right now. Dave, you and I talked about the importance of quick pit stops. Great work there by the Q crew to get Hanley out with a full tank of fuel and now swings by the outside of the 17 of Dave Ison and moves it around on the turn number four. It doesn't take Hanley long to get back to ground here at Cayuga. On the face of things, you might think that was an anxious moment for Hanley. After all, the man that they've hired to come in and stop him was right on his back bumper. All it might take is a well-timed tap to send Junior Hanley out of this thing. Yeah. But I'll tell you right now, that is not the kind of racer Kenny Schrader is. He came in here today to beat Junior Hanley, not to beat up on Junior Hanley. Junior now behind the 25 of Robbie Thompson. We're going to ride on board once again with Ken Schrader and the Sony Dynamax onboard handicap. You can see the windscreen getting a little bit difficult as far as visibility is concerned. Drafting it right in behind Hanley. Not a bad guy to follow through the pack here at Cayuga. As they sort it out single file, lap traffic, slower cars to a breath. So Hanley and Schrader, at least for the moment, are going to have to bide their time. These two guys have raced each other before. Hanley mentioned that in the press conference earlier this week. There's the Joe Gonzalez, number 93. But Hanley and Schrader have raced each other while the Copper Classic comes into mind. And now Gonzalez almost gets in the way, swings to the bottom. Or was it the fact that Schrader swung to the outside? I think Schrader took a quick look down on the other lane, but couldn't find any room to race. And as a result, Hanley now has gotten out of Dodge in a hurry. He's got a big lead over Kenny Schrader, but he's not worried about that number 50 right now. His eyes are set dead ahead. He's still got some traffic to pass before he can get back up and try and chase down this guy, Kevin LePage. Halfway standings, Kevin LePage, Randy McDonald, Steve Knowlton, Crouch, LaPearl, and Brad Layton. Wallace, Pete Shepard doing a nice job in Beaver Dragon, Noel Jr., Junior Hanley, Andre Bodwin, Mason, Schrader, and Thompson. Still a long way to go in this one. A lot of potential front runners, including the leader, Kevin LePage, have yet to make their pit stops. LePage still on the same four tires, the same tank of gas that right. he took the green flag. He may be a gambling man as the yellow flag is out once again. Second yellow flag of the event, Derek Lynch. There he is, recovered, but he looped it around in the onset Buick on the backstretch. That's going to slow the field again, Dave. Lynch may have had a little bit of help. Let's go to the in car. This is the Derek Lynch automobile going to the high side of Robbie Thompson in turn number two. No problem. Oh, so far as he gets tagged and around he goes. Tough to see who the culprit might have been. But again, like Howie Scannell before him, Derek Lynch, very fortunate not to get collected. I tell you, when they go all the way around and the traffic's bearing down on you, I don't think I'd ever get used to that. That is a scary situation. Not to mention the fact that there's a three-foot high concrete wall oh. all the way around this racetrack. Here comes Randy McDonald. The second place automobile is in the pits. The GM Park Pro Shop Chevrolet, who, parade now. who really got shanghaied by Kevin LePage on that restart, now comes in for his right side tires. There's Beaver Dragon. There's Hanley again. I guarantee it'll be left this time for the Q crew. This has been a busy, busy bunch in practice on Saturday, Dave. They must have changed springs and shocks about four or five times trying to find the handling. And if a guy doesn't know how to set up the car at this place, it's Junior Hanley, but it takes you a while. Now they're going to go for rubber on the left side of the car. Back in the pit, there's Randy McDonald taking on fuel and right side rubber. Junior Hanley, Eric, has never been a driver to make do with a less than ideal pace car. If he can bring it on pit road, let the crew do some work and maybe get himself a little more speed, he'll do it, especially in the first half of a race. So Hanley and McDonald now together at the back of the pack. Just watching those guys work. Superlative service for both McDonald and Junior Hanley. It's only a 5 8 mile oval, Dave. It doesn't take long. One little bolt doesn't go on right away. And you've got trouble. You can get lapped easy, but both guys stay on the lead lap. We're about to get the restart. Pace car is in. Down along the front straightaway, Kevin LePage and Steve Moulton in the 88 are going to drag race down to one. 
Kevin LePage, this time with the advantage on the inside, makes short work of it. He pulls away with the lead. Knowlton is in second. Then the six bangers. 1X Brad Layton, 48 Robbie Crouch. They're giving up some horsepower, but it has not hurt them so far. What the weight break does with the V6, we should explain that again, Dave, is that is a little less tire wear, and it didn't take Crouch long to make his presence felt. He's been hanging back fourth, fifth. Same thing with the Brad Layton 1X, but the two six bangers going to go side by side down the back stretch. Layton on the inside, the youngster Crouch, the six time champion on the outside, picked up his first victory of the year not long ago at Mosport. He'd love to make it two in a row here at Cayuga, but right now he's got himself a pretty good battle. Crouch, the Tampa Tornado on the outside, now the number three automobile. One X of Brad Layton driving with a broken middle finger on his right hand. He wrestled with a truck tire back at his shop. He says it wouldn't affect the way I handle the car. He's got a broken finger there, a little bit of a little bit of a damage there, but it's not going to affect the way he's driving. He's doing a nice job out here, too. You've got that New Hampshire accent down pretty well. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> right behind Brad Layton, another fellow known for his accent. That's racing Ralph Mason in car number 10. And behind him, a good run for the youngster, Danny Knoll Jr. from Buffalo. I tell you, I'm going to say it again. I am impressed by Kevin LePage. He really got rung up in that crash up at Mosport. The last show you saw on race line, hit the outside wall, inside wall. He's got a stiff neck, a lower back. Chiropractor many times. It hurts to sit. It hurts to stand up. Not hurting him now. Look at him. He's feeling no pain, to coin a phrase. As long as he can lead this race, he'll be feeling just fine. Thank you very much. The battle is for second. Steve Nolter, what a great story. The rookie driver, former Rookie of the Year driver on the American Canadian Tour. He is the independent independent. You will not see a lot of sponsorship on the quarter panels of that Chevrolet. It's himself, his girlfriend, his crew member, one, and a dog. That's <laughs> it for Steve Nolter. But they're here today, and they're running strong. Very friendly dog, too. Now, Derek Lynch. Trying to uh, get some navigation going down the backstretch. Randy McDonald in the 0-1. Going to take him on the inside. Junior Henley tucked in behind. Three potential winners of this race that are all at the back of the pack for a variety of reasons. McDonald and Henley after pit stops. Lynch after getting turned around in turn number two. But he's in some pretty fast company right now. If he sticks with the 01 and the 72, he'll be at the front before long. Talk about handling. Seeing the 16 of Kip Stockwell there and the 15 of Derek Lynch. These guys like to track square around the corners, but you can't win at this place unless you run the car loose. And Derek Lynch is used to a loose car. I bet you he's struggling with the handling here. Well, that's one of the advantages of being a veteran. You can adapt to the race car. You can set it up loose. You can dirt track the rear end through mm -hmm. the corners. The youngsters like to have complete control of that automobile, automobile at all times. Who wouldn't? But it's not the fast way around. Crouch, who picked up his first win, as you mentioned, just this season after winning six last year, hot on the heels of the 88 of Steve Knowlton. Knowlton down the back straightaway. Perhaps you saw last time around a very thick kind of a black band around the inside of turn two. There's also a bit of one here in turn four, though not nearly as pronounced. It looks like the racetrack is coming apart on the bottom of the turns, but it's not. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. See that big black yeah. stripe? That is rubber building up on the racetrack. Yesterday, after qualifying at practice, look out, we got trouble. Derek Lynch has blown it up. Uh-oh. Lynch in the 15 has coughed up the power plant. The youngster who was coming back to the front of the pack with Hanley and McDonald now may be done for the day. This might be a lengthy yellow day. There's all kinds of smoke, oil, and fluid down there, so we're going to slow it down. Field under caution. They back it down, so let's go down to the pits and John. Well, this was not the plan for Derek Lynch as Dave Lynch and the Value Vision Onsat team goes over the wall to try and determine what's wrong with Derek's car. Bang the motor is the early prognosis as Derek came in without power and the crew puts it up on the jack stands to have a look. Junior handling in the pitch now. Are these guys changing tires? Every time they come in, the Q crew's got to jump in here, and now they're going to go for right side rubber. Junior still isn't satisfied with the setup on the car. And that tells me a lot about Junior Handley's frame of mind right now. Eric. Three cautions. He's been in the pits every single time. Mm -hmm. Tells you that he is willing to spare no expense in his effort to make not 50, but $100,000 and change. 50 for the Bud Triple Crown, and another 50 if he can win the GM title. Nason on the Jackson Moore from the Triple Crown coming up. You know, a quarter of a century sounds like an awful long time to be involved with just one sport, so why don't we just say 25 years? It doesn't sound as long. 
Ralph Nason of Unity, Maine, started racing back in 1965 with great old iron like this 57 Chevy. Since then, like any wily veteran, he's looked for that quick advantage. Back in those good old days, you know, you could get away with almost anything. Well, we've uh, done such things as weld two wheels together and run two tires because they had a rule you could, uh, you know, have all the tires, but you couldn't get them on one wheel. So we welded two together and filled them full of water. We did all kinds of things back then. Ralph never does anything the way anybody else does it. As a matter of fact, you may have noticed, although not on these body panels specifically, his car is sponsored by Jim's Salad Company. Rather unusual sponsorship for a race car. Until you understand that Jim's Salad Company, Ralph's firm, makes Kentucky Fried Chicken coleslaw for a number of outlets in the New England state. Not bad, Ralph. You got any extra crispy on you? Well, is uh, I own the company, and we make all the coleslaw for the Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants in Maine and New Hampshire. And uh, for all the uh, big supermarket chains, we buy the cabbage right now. The last load just came from Montreal, matter of fact. And uh, we bring it home and process it, clean it and process it and package it for those people. Besides the driving part, the Nasons run Unity Raceway near Bangor. So Ralph's had the benefit of seeing the business from both sides. Well, we bought the racetrack in uh, the fall of 1980. And uh, we ran it there. It had been closed. So we like to go racing there. So we wound up buying it. and. Uh, and we ran the thing out until 92. Ralph is back in the car and running, leaving the track business to the rest of his family. Yes, it's quite obvious that Ralph would rather be racing at those tracks than operating them. He's 52 years of age now, so I imagine in the next handful of seasons, he'll turn the Chrysler over to his son, Ron, assuring the American Canadian Tour has a race in Nason around for a good many seasons yet. Ralph Nason, one of racing's colorful people, brought to you by Kodak. Oh, Ralph Nason, indeed, a real character, but uh, if you're done chewing on your drumstick, now we're ready to go racing. Oh, okay, yes, we are done. LePage, Knowlton, Leighton, Crouch, Dan Beatty, one through five, and we're back to this war up front, and Kevin LePage gets a great start here off the restart. LePage with a great low-end start, so had a slow pace coming out of turn four, and then really jumped it at the green. There's the one extra, Brad Leighton underneath Steve Knowlton, Crouch goes underneath Steve Knowlton, and the 88 really is getting the Rim ride backwards now as Dan Beatty goes underneath him in turn four. This track might be getting a little bit slick as they're coming by the wall here for you. You notice the 1X of Brad Layton getting really loose in the rear end. Well, we mentioned before that there is a bit of a problem on the inside of the second turn with that rubber building up. Definitely makes things a little bit greasy. Here's the man on the charge once again. Interrupted briefly by a pit stop, but it has not slowed his progress. Down to the inside, Randy McDonald in the 0-1, now the fourth place automobile. You mentioned the stats, and let's do that again. He still has a chance to catch Junior Hanley, but Hanley will win his second consecutive GM National Stock Car Series and the Bud Triple Crown with a win, but he's been chased all year long by the golden boy from Oshawa. Randy McDonald has not made it easy. Of course, McDonald knows what it's like to wear that GM Series crown. He did it back in 1990. He was dethroned by Hanley a year ago. So Randy McDonald says, turnabout's fair play. I'll knock him off the throne today. But he's going to need a little help, Eric. 34 points is a lot of ground to make up if both of them finish this race. Got to go back to this handling story, Dave. You see the 1X of, of Brad Layton. He gets really loose coming off the corners with the D6. Conversely, the 48 of Robbie Crouch, nice and square and flat all the way around the racetrack. What Layton hasn't got in handling, you know Crouch's crew have found. Uh, Robbie Crouch does not often miss the mark in terms of handling. He's been racing for nearly two decades now since coming north for the first time from his home in Tampa, Florida, along with his dad, the late C.A. Crouch. They came north because they wanted to find a place to race five nights a week. Yellow to slow it down. Yellow flag number three coming out and a car up against the pole here on the backstretch. That's car number 40, Bill Zardo Jr., and for some reason or another, Eric, he has minus the entire left front tire and wheel assembly. Well, he had some problems earlier on the weekend with the, his rear end, but now it's the front one that's given him problems. Going to come by with a wrecker and get rid of Zardo Jr. back here and get this thing. Oh, okay, now, have you thought about this? Which of the following three have claimed ACT NASCAR North wins at Cayuga? Fadden, Earnhardt, LaJoy. What do you think, Dave? I think it's a trick question. You do not. Trick question. <laughs> it's all of the above. Dale Earnhardt, Stump Fadden, and Randy LaJoy have all claimed wins here at Cayuga. American Canadian Tour, NASCAR North, previous to that long history here at Cayuga Speedway. And we've got some more front runners set to come in. This is a bit of a surprise. One of the V6 automobiles. Brad Layton will come in for tires and gasoline. So 
our early thoughts about one of the six holers trying to go the distance. Well, that strategy is halfway out the window. I don't think it's fuel. It's tires obviously going to go for right side rubber here, but obviously the car is very loose. He's got to come in. He might as well get a drink of fuel. Here's Kenny Schrader in the pits as well. They're going to go to left side tires this time. Took on right side about 40 or 50 laps ago. So the Winston Cup star from Fenton, Missouri, now he should be set to go the distance. Not the first time you just joined us that Ken Schrader has been here at Cayuga. He ran Cascar. Now Randy McDonald is out of power on the top of pit row here. The GM Parts Pro Shop machine has just gone dead in the water. They're going to try and push him down to his pit. Let's open the radio channel and eavesdrop and see what the problem is. It's it started, Randy. They're pushing you. Randy McDonald, Eric Thomas, can you talk quick? What's the problem, bud? She won't run, Eric. I guess that's the summary of it. Just won't refire? Just open up the hood and see if you can see anything. The battery cable might have come off. Check that. Right. It's not the battery cable because the ignition switch is still on. Check the starter of the solenoid, maybe. The motor might be locked up, I don't know, or the starter might be gone. Smoke came out of there a couple turns ago. Am I glad we had the radio channels open? You don't get to see or listen to that entire exchange in any other professional sport. Randy, Gina, and the crew describe what happened. And you can see really the hopelessness. You can hear the hopelessness in his voice. The chase is over. The championship is gone for Randy McDonald. But at the front, we've got a green flag. Kevin LePage, Robbie Crouch, and back in the hunt, 53, Dan Beatty. Dan Beatty has found it again in junior. Hanley swings by the 88 of Steve Knowlton. He wants part of that party as well. Junior Hanley is on the charge, but look at the job LePage continues to do up front here. We've got two different strategies at work. LePage and Crouch have not pitted. They've gone the distance so far. Dan Beatty and Junior Hanley have pitted. Beatty wants Junior three different times, and they've come from the back to get back into contention. Saw the 27 swinging by there, too, of Kim Wallace. Now we see Junior ducking down underneath Dan Beatty, and he takes over third place. Junior is on the move. And Eric, that looked off Awfully, awfully easy. I think the Q crew has finally dialed Junior Hanley into where he wants to be. He's two spots away from $100,000 right now, but those two spots are not going to be able to going to be easy to come by. 48. Robbie Crouch, and at the front, Kevin LePage. Crouch glances in the rearview mirror. He sees Junior Hanley. There's a 28 of Dennis Robertson dropping down to the low group, letting the leaders swirl by here. Junior sets his sights now on Crouch, drops it down, then wait to the next turn to try and make the move here. And you can see Robbie Crouch running high in the corners. Those old tires are beginning to cost him some speed. Yep. And Junior Hanley immediately sticks it down to the inside. This should not be a very long battle. Hanley on the new tires, able to stick down low, traps Crouch up high in the 48. They are side by side into turn one. Six cylinder two for Robbie Crouch. Don't forget that. He gives up about 50, 50 to 60 horsepower on Junior and he makes the pass. There's the move we we're waiting for. Hanley now one spot away from the big payday as Kevin LePage leads the way. Five car lengths back to Hanley. Then Crouch in third. Eric, these fans are getting exactly what they paid to see. Junior Hanley, vintage Hanley on the march for the lead. I think we have to review this. What is the Hanley propulsion? It's the Ron Hunter power plant, but it's a six-figure payday, and he can't get it from where he is right now. A couple of T-Birds bumping up front here. Hanley tucks it down on the inside. He's got to get up front. He's got the GM championship and the triple crown on the line. Well, like Robbie Crouch before him, though, Kevin LePage leaving the barn door wide open through the corners. Hanley dials it in on the low side of LePage, sticks the nose in, but give Kevin LePage some credit. He is holding off Hanley right now. Back to the inside comes the 72. This is it, folks. For all the marbles, Hanley is on the move. Hanley down in that middle groove. LePage drifting up high with those old tires. Now Hanley ducks it down underneath. 
Down they go into the turn. Back and forth and down the back stretch. This should be the place where Hanley will make the move. If Hanley's going to get it done, this is the time. This is the place. Is. Hanley on the inside picks it up, and this crowd, Eric, is loving it. Junior Hanley, the favorite son, is out on top. And right now, if they're going to cost him 100 grand, somebody's going to have to do it from behind. Dave, most of the fans here wanting to see Junior Hanley pick up the big payday. But let's go back in the history here. Junior Hanley has been a great big dry spell here at Cayuga Speedway as far as major events. He's had the car break. Something has happened in the last few laps. But back when they used to run regular Friday night shows here, he was invincible. But he's not there for the big payday yet. Have a look at Ken Schrader. Kenny Schrader from the back of the pack has broken into the top ten, and he may yet have a few cards to play as he moves around Dan Beatty. You know, Eric, they call Yankee Stadium in New York the house that Ruth built. Mm -hmm. They might as well call Cayuga the house that Junior built because his battles, as you mentioned, in the 70s with Don Biederman, oh, many yeah. of them on the racetrack, many of them not <laughs> on the racetrack. That's right. Filled the grandstands here for a lot of years. Biederman not in the field today, but Kenny Schrader is stepping up to the plate and ready to take his swings at Junior Handler. Yeah, but the old nemesis, old Daytona Don, was in the infield here, and he's watching Junior Handley, his old nemesis, as you said, out in front. But Kenny and Schrader starting to move up here as we're watching him here moving on the outside of Steve Norton in the 88. Schrader to the high side really getting it done. We talked earlier about his car clearly not being especially fast in the early going but they've bided their time. They've made some critical tire change and Schrader on the outside is now the fourth place automobile as he moves around the 88 of Steve Nolter. Look at this line that Schrader has taken. I watched him in practice for his first two turns around here. He really hasn't wavered away from that strategy. He takes the outside to the middle lane. That seems to be where this car behaves the best. Schrader has raced here in the past enough to know the fast way around. He can't be experimenting right now. That's right. He's get, still got some cars between himself and Junior Handley, not to mention quite a bit of open asphalt. If Schrader's going to play the hired gun role and knock Handley off his perch, he cannot afford to experiment right now. He's going to find the fast line. He's going to stay on it. And best of all, he's got to hope for a yellow flag. He told us earlier this week when he first came in to, uh, to talk about this race, he wanted to give everybody, a regular runner in the ACT, a lot of room to maneuver out here. He's in a better frame of mind. He's He's now starting to pick up his Winston Cup effort halfway through. He's about 15th in points or so, but he's winning on the charge now, and he's in a better frame of mind than he ever has been all year. Had a great run last night in Bristol, Tennessee. Drew, Finished Drew. up number three overall in what was really a demolition derby <laughs> style of a race. So far today, it's been pretty tame compared to Bristol. Whoop, wait a minute. We've got some cars in the uh -oh. wall. It's Steve Nolton in the 88. Danny the fifth place automobile, Danny Nolan, Ralph Nason. Ralph Nason in late along with Danny Noll Jr. out of Buffalo. There's the steam coming out of the nascent rad. We've seen that before. Knowlton up here against the wall. That was a hard hit for a few guys here. What a heartbreaker. Steve Knowlton running in the fifth spot. Danny Knoll Jr. running in the top ten. Ralph Nason as well. Well, that is ultra messy stuff up there in the corner. This is going to take some time to clean up. And this is an elongated yellow, and all that does is build up the tension for the Hanley crew, Hanley himself, and the fans in the stands who want to see that monster payday. Junior Hanley, Kevin LePage, and the man that gets the big break via the yellow flag. Kenny Schrader, who now will be right on Hanley's back bumper. The hired gun is within shooting distance now of his target, Junior Hanley. Those guys are like that V6, V8 battle. Great job by Leighton and Crouch inside the top five. This late in the going, that's great stuff. That's a tough break for a couple of youngsters. Stevie Knowlton, Danny Knowlton Jr. Let's see if we what can find here, out Dave? what happened. That's Steve Knowlton in the white car, and you can see he dropped the motor, around it goes. Be Beaver Dragon, Danny Knoll, somehow Bill Zardo got through it. Let's get it from the other side. This is Kim Wallace. The action happening already in front of him. Cars all over the trail. Whoa. Ralph Nason piles in and right into the side of Danny Knoll. Down to the pit with John. Well, according to the ACT rule book, the last five laps of the race are always run under green. So it means it's going to be a five-lap dash for the cash for Junior Hanley to wrap up the $50,000 bud bonus. This quite possibly could be the most expensive five laps in all of the history of Canadian motorsports. We know that Hanley's got the fuel, he's got the tires, Page up front there with him, so just a few laps away from the payday everybody's been talking about for months on this tour. Let's keep Kevin LePage in mind. He's the gambling man. He has not pitted. Hanley is away at the drop of the green. LePage trapped on the outside. Here comes Kenny Schrader. Can't get it done. LePage shuts the door into turn one. Evidence there. We talked about it on the top of the show, Dave. Schrader does not have the quick car, but look where he is. In third place, staying out of the way, cool, calm, and collected 
classic Schrader out here. But right now, that's not going to get the job done as Junior Hanley is pulling away. Schrader down to the inside of Kevin LePage, but this may be too little too late. Schrader going for second, but with every passing second, Hanley pulls a bit further away. Kevin LePage is very valiantly hanging in there for second place, but he's forced to the outside of the track. It's just that Schrader doesn't have the horsepower to try and get by him here. It'll be three laps to go this time, and the battle is for second. Schrader again punches the nose inside Kevin LePage. Page, but again, LePage in the 21 with the horsepower to hold him off. Down the back straight away, this time two to go. Robbie Crouch trying to keep that lead trio in view as well, but he is back there, and I don't think he's going to have enough time to make any sort of a serious challenge. It's still LePage in second. Ken Schrader trying to tuck the Oldsmobile nose in underneath, but LePage still has enough to try and hold him off. Junior Hanley, ordinarily the coolest customer in town, doesn't get excited, doesn't get flustered. I guarantee the heart rate is up there right now. He is a lap and a half away from a six-digit payday. Hanley in the 72, all by himself. LePage is second. Schrader is third as they bring it down the front straight away. Junior Hanley with a nice job here. A few more turns of the wheel, and LePage has dropped off the pace. He's out of gas. Yes, he has to be. The 21 has run out of fuel. Schrader is underneath for second. Crouch for third. Layton for fourth. My goodness, what a last-minute turn for LePage. He's dropping all the way out of the top ten. Checkered flag is out. $100,000 for Junior Hanley. Can I back the armored car up to the door and load it in for him? What a payday for Junior Hanley. Second consecutive year, J.R. pockets the Budweiser Triple Crown dollars. Kenny Schrader, the hired gun, comes up one spot short. Crouch and Layton in third and fourth. B.D. Wallace, Whitlock, Beaver Dragon recovering, and Andre Bodwan. That is the top ten. Kevin LePage dropped all the way out of the top ten on the front straightaway of the white flag lap. Well, if he's got some engine repairs or things to buy, he can do it now with a six-figure check coming. The results from Raceline. Talk to the winner coming back in just a moment. Well, the Las Vegas odd makers uh, would probably say there was not a chance that this thing would happen two years in a row. Junior, congratulations. The Bud $50,000 bonus. Well, we thought it was going to be really hard this time, and it really was hard. Uh, we got the car messed up a little bit, and then we pitted a couple times, got the car right back, and I just got to thank all the sponsors and all the crew in there did all the job. Like, I just sat here and drove it. Junior, you were blindingly quick all afternoon. There was a couple three pit stops. What was the thing that got you running back up to the front so quickly? Well, we pitted and put rights on, and the car was a lot better. So then we pitted and put lefts on, and the car was really good. And then we pitted again and put rights on, and it was really good then. Well, it's been over a $100,000 payday for Junior Hanley as he locks up the GM National Stock Car Series and the Bud Triple Crown bonus. Junior, there's a bunch of people that want to see you outside. Uh, thank you very much. Junior Hanley going to climb out of this car, listen for the crowd. Hand goes up in the air. He is a god at this place. There's no other way to describe it, Dave. Well, he's a rich god, too. <laughs> $100,000 rich. Final GM National Stock Car Series standings. Junior Hanley takes it for the second year in a row. But what a battle all year from Randy McDonald, Dave. And a great battle from this gentleman, the second place man, Kenny Schrader. Kenny, it was a great afternoon. 24th position you started, got backed up a little bit. The car uh, was a little loose, according to Howie, but uh, you brought it right around the second place finish. Well, them, the guys uh, did some change on it, and the track came to us a little bit, but, uh, you know, we, we got a little better at the end, but we didn't have, we weren't in junior's class. He had us covered. Well, it was a great run this afternoon. And second place, second to junior, it's not a bad run. It looked like the brew crew out there between you and him. <laughs> well, a little Budweiser car did good. We just didn't do good enough today, but uh, really got to congratulate junior. Knows the, they did a heck of a job. We, we feel good coming in here running second, though. Fabulous run for Ken Schrader here at Cayuga. Ravel, model performance of the race. Dave Moody, everybody on pit row, here's the reason why. Well, here's the tail end of the pit crew relay. That's the Roger LaPearl team handing off to the Dan Beatty crew. Now, Randy McDonald's own crew. Good work, fellas. But our headline story, what a year for Junior Hanley. His second straight Budweiser took a crown and his second straight GM National Stock Car Series title. And as Larry Fink of GM Parts presents the trophy, a one-day take for Junior Hanley, $111,095. Our congratulations to the 92 GM National Stock Car Series champion, Junior Hanley of Campbellville, Ontario.
Well, Dave Moody, I think we're running out of superlatives and accolades for Junior Hanley. He was the story when we did our opening, and he's the story when we do our closing. He came through for the big payday. Well, what more can you say? When the big race is on the line, Junior Hanley has a way of coming through. Kenny Schrader, the hired gun, gave it all he had, but he came up one bullet short in the cartridge. A great race here today, but once again, Junior Hanley walks away with a big buck. And an impressive ride by Schrader, too. He, he finishes third at Bristol, comes up here, and he drives the heart out of that car and finishes second. A very methodical race. Started dead last on the field, picked his way through the pack but he was there when the chips were down so that's going to do it from here junior hanley nails his second consecutive gm national stock car series championship and his second straight budweiser triple crown that's going to do it from here on behalf of dave moody and john massingbird i'm eric thomas saying so long from raceline racing radio is provided by new venture communications london ontario in car and wall cameras supplied by sony canada makers of the sony handycam Raceline has been brought to you by GM Parts, the expert choice. Kodak Gold Plus Film, you can't keep the moment without Kodak. Castro XLR, the oil engineered for today's cars. Ravel, the world's model maker. And by Budweiser Racing, it's a Bud Race. or comments for Raceline, drop us a line at Post Office Box 551, Caledonia, Ontario, NOA 1AO. Or give us a call at 416-765-0170.